Hello, hello. Wait, Gaysikas, Grey, Captain Iskis. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We just let this waterfall of humans come in. I know we can't see any of your smiling faces, but we're so grateful that each and every one of you are here today with us. Nearly 100 people and climbing. We'll just let them come in for a moment. And while we do that, um, I'll just say hello briefly. My name's Jade. I work with the Outdoor Learning Store. Um, we are an organization dedicated to bringing uh, outdoor learning tools, equipment and resources to you, uh, and especially through some of these amazing free professional development opportunities. Uh, I'm actually um, joining you today. I'm normally in the traditional lands of the Snipes uh, people uh, along the banks of the Columbia River, but I'm right down at the uh, in the center of the Rocky Mountains, at the Rocky Mountain National Park, the traditional territories of the Dene and the Uta. Um, uh, having Poe people um, around Estes Park, uh, so I'm incredibly grateful to be visiting here. There's elk right outside the window, ground squirrels running about and enjoying the rain here, which I wish to send to all of the people across Turtle Island that need rain today. Uh, over to you, Steph. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to see everyone heading in. I know that we can't see you because we're in webinar format right now, but oh, I see a little reaction there. That's a nice way to know that you're all hanging out and learning and listening together. Uh, so we know you're there, even though we can't see your faces at this time. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I am the program coordinator for Take Me Outside and happy to be a co-host today and also representing our 70 plus outdoor learning partners uh, from across Turtle Island. And I myself am joining in from uh, Coast Salish land, uh, more specifically Coatzin territory, land of the Cowichan tribes and Hokuminam speaking people. And uh, we'll give you a full Zoom 101 here, but I see uh, in a minute here, but I see people saying hello in the chat and that's, that's always so lovely. Just make sure you're writing it to everyone so we can all see instead of just hosted panelists. But uh, I'll pass it over to Jade and we'll, we'll get going in a minute here. Thanks so much, Del. Um, so we know within Turtle Island or North America, uh, land-based learning uh, has to honor the traditional um, knowledge of this place, uh, the people that have lived here for time immemorial um, and have suffered at the hands of colonialism. For some reason, I have an old version of this, uh, so that skips that for a minute, but it is National Indigenous History Month in Canada, uh, which culminates on June 21st with the National um, Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, if you do um, know whose traditional territory you're on, please share in the in the chat with us here and just take a moment to have a waterfall of acknowledgement. Land acknowledgements are just a start. They're just a, a, a moment in time in order to, uh, as a stepping point to do real truth and reconciliation work. So we encourage you to really build those relationships that enable you to um, move forward from this place um, of just sharing in these spaces. And um, Yes, if you don't know where you are, native-land.ca actually covers the whole globe. Uh, that's a really amazing resource you can dive into. Um, and with that, um, uh, I'd love to welcome um, a, a fantastic person to, who's going to join us to, to open the workshop today. Um, I'm just going to make you uh, a spotlight so that everyone can see you. Uh, Quartolton Robert Goldsmith. Um, is the manager of sales at Strong Nations. He's been working there for four years uh, and worked in publishing and kind of all aspects of this beautiful organization. It's indigenous owned and operated. Um, Robert's a husband, a father, and he comes in from the Carol Chen tribes um, in, uh, on Vancouver Island, or what we call it, Vancouver Island. And before you share, Robert, I'm just, I'm so grateful to have met you in person in May, your lovely wife. Um, got to engage with, I've been using Strong Nations resources um, for years now. Uh, so grateful that you're joining us. And, and, and with that, um, I have some, some ceremony grown tobacco uh, to hold in my left hand, the closest one to my heart. Um, this work is, has shifted the entire makeup of the way uh, that I view the world. And uh, when I'm outside, the deeper connections that I have are as a result uh, of learning uh, deeply from a lot of the resources that you share, from the conversations we've had, uh, from the efforts um, of your sharing, um, despite all odds and despite um, 
you know, centuries of, of having your culture decimated. I'm so grateful that you are still here sharing um, and, and, and powerful in it. And so with you, I offer this um, as, a, as a token of appreciation of gratitude for the fact that you're here with us today, sharing your knowledge and, uh, and your heart with us. So I, I offer this to you, Robert. Thank you, Jane. Uh, it's very nice to I meet everyone. Post. It's very nice to meet everyone. And Stephanie, it's great to see you again. And Bridget and Charlotte, it's uh, nice to meet you guys for the first time. Um, my name's uh, Quill Talton. Um, my English name is Robert Goldsmith. Uh, I've been working with Strong Nations for four years now. And what we do here is we produce um, authentic resources, mostly for educators. We are working into trade books. We recently had our first graphic novel come out uh, in December, uh, Andy's Tribal Canoe Journey. So we're venturing out into um, <clears throat> new avenues for us. Um, we're always looking to expand um, as well because we carry things we call strong stories. And what they do is they share um, ways of life. Um, what else is there? Ways of life, um, culture. Um, different things that different tribes hold as value. Um, we're always looking to expand that. So if you guys happen to be partnering with some of the local First Nations, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we always are looking to meet and support indigenous authors and artists uh, any way we can. Even if it's something that doesn't benefit us, we believe in pushing that forward. So if you guys need any help in any way, feel free to reach out to me and I'm always willing to help and lend an ear. I'm not always too sure what to say in these things, but I'm very fortunate to be partnered with Outdoor Learning and uh, just everything that they've involved me with has been great. They have shown me things that I did not know um, as far as, you know, just to be a part of something that is so, in my opinion, well-respected, uh, land-based learning, very important. Uh, it's hard to, today to get lost in social media and in your cell phone and different things like that. So to be able to go out and get grounded and teach these younger generations that it's important to connect with nature. Um, yeah, uh, Tron blinks here. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, you don't have to be sorry. We're, we're so glad that you're here sharing. Um, you know, and it's you have books, you have you have the puppets we're going to talk about. Like, there's so many different resources that cover such a large area, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. uplifting voices from everywhere. Yeah, so we're always looking to expand. So maybe Jade, if we can put the website in the in the message, so everybody can check us out if they haven't heard of us. Um, we recently had a big shift in our company as well. So now that we've had this shift me and my senior management team have elevated to um, running the company. So we no longer have like a CEO or a director above us, which is big. And with us being able to hire staff, we are now hiring more indigenous staff and getting things the way we feel they should be. And having all these different people from different cultures, even throughout the island has been a big, big impact. Just, uh, you know, having so many different avenues and different tribes views has been good for us. And we come from all over, which is great. So Strong Nations, we believe in producing authentic resources and please check us out. And I'm always here to lend an ear if you have any questions. Can I ask you one question? Of course. It, most of the, or the vast majority of our educators are non-Indigenous here. Um, if you had some advice for them for National Indigenous History Month and every month of the year, if they're connecting to land-based learning or outdoor learning, do you have like a piece of advice of how, how they can do that in a good way? Um, in my opinion, what we have a big issue with with people is educators, non-Indigenous educators have an issue with sharing some culture, whether it be language or, you know, um, they're afraid of essentially butchering what they're doing. And it's it's not about that. It's 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 funny because for us, we share a lot of language in a lot of the different books that we share. And teachers are not buying our resources because they don't want to try and share and butcher the language. So essentially, 
in my opinion, there's no wrong way to do it. And like I said, if there's anything you guys need and being non-Indigenous, it's difficult to find people to ask questions to, I can always be that sounding board. So feel free to email me at sales at strongnations.com and I'll help you work through whatever you got going on. That's so beautiful, Robert. Thank you so much for sharing. Be brave, people. Read the book, share the books, share the language. Um, that's what we're here for as part of this work. Um, and I'm so grateful uh, to see you again, Robert. Um, it's always the greatest pleasure. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to keep on scooching through here. Um, hopefully my computer will obey rules. It's just loading here for a second. Okay, so we are here. It is the out. It's the last, the final in the outdoor learning spring virtual workshop series. Uh, thank you, Robert, for starting us off in a good way and for creating a little beautiful, safe, inclusive space for us to keep going. Um, spoiler alert: we've just released the full virtual workshop series. So summer, do your own thing, but come back to us in September. We're looking at engaging um, children of all abilities outdoors, wild learning, math and patterns in nature connecting kids to nature through indigenous teachings. We have a fully, our first ever fully francophone uh, webinar workshop. Ça sera excellent, j'espère. And um, closing with Megan Zenni and Mariana Brusoni talking about a digital tool of these 90 second clips of how to be the best outdoor teacher that you can take with you anywhere, any lesson, any time. So we're so excited. Um, it is National Digital History Month. Thank you so much for sharing. Go to strongnations.com. Uh, any gifts, books, publishing you want, you can get them there. And we stock a bunch of stuff as well uh, with this store. If you haven't heard yet, we are doing four seasons of Indigenous learning. And so that is curated and curated um, by uh, Indigenous creators, authors, educators, uh, and online courses are supplemented by a one uh, virtual workshop per month where you can listen, uh, ask questions, and engage in discussion. Robin Wall Kimmer is starting us off, and we have this fantastic lineup of incredible uh, knowledge keepers who are going to share with us so you can sign up the links in the chat there uh, if you also don't want to do the online course you can just sign up for the workshops we can't do this without support from all of these incredible people we have international partners we have us partners and each and every one of you uh, is doing phenomenal work um, for some reason, that's the end of my slides. We have a bunch of Canadian partners. I have no idea where all of my things have gone, but that is okay. That is the way things go when we get to the end of the season. <laughs> things happen, you think we'd have it. But you know what, let's have a quick poll and see who's in the room with us, um, because it is important to know what's happening. So I'm going to launch these polls here. Um, there's two questions, you scroll down for a second. So I'm asking where you're from. We did sort of continents, but we split Canada and the US. I am aware that they are part of one continent, but we're just trying to figure out who, who we've got in the room. I'm desperate that one day we will have someone join from Antarctica. It's, it's a pipe dream as of yet, but uh, we'll see. Um, just a little penguin just waddling in the background. Um, and also, Dan, tell us who are you off? What, what age grade are you teaching? Are you, uh, we've got lots of early childhoods coming in. I'm just gonna leave it open for just five more seconds, four, three, two, one, I'm going to end that poll. I'm going to share those results. Okay, uh, vast majority coming from Canada today and United States too. And, but we have someone from every single um, sort of educational concept that we can think about. And, and even people who aren't technically educators, uh, but who are just here for the love of the subject. So thank you so much. Um, yes, we are in webinar format. We are going back to workshop format so we can see your smiling faces and that one lady who I love, I don't know if you're here, but you used to walk on your treadmill and it used to keep me going the whole way through, just watching you doing it. So we want to go back to that place. So join us um, right now. You're all muted. We can't see you, but please use the chat, communicate with each other, share resources, talk to us. There's also the Q&A box, um, create those questions and then I'll pose them to Bridget or Charlotte at the end. Um, you're going to get access to the recording, a discount code and a certificate of attendance uh, via email tomorrow, along with some resources shared. Um, please use the reactions button that's at the bottom of your bar. It's the smiley face with the plus. So then um, Charlotte and Bridget might see these little waves of hearts or claps or smiley faces or the wow one is my favorite. Yeah, thank you. You got it. I see people loving. Thank you so much. We can't unmute you to share, um, but you can ask questions in the chat and we'll come at you. So 
Um, this um, is using puppets uh, to animate outdoor learning. And here uh, we have Charlotte uh, Souls. Charlotte's a grade one teacher in the West Kootenays. Uh, she brings her background in early childhood education, of which we have loads here, great. Uh, and her love of music and singing to her weekly Forest Friday adventures with her students. Bridget O'Malley teaches grade four in the mornings and outdoor class from the kindergartens and grade ones in the afternoon. She treasures her afternoons with the little ones and looks forward to their joyful play and sense of wonder every day. Uh, and you're gonna feel it, you're gonna feel it in everything they're doing, it's so great. Um, Charlotte and Bridget are members of their local cool Kootenay Columbia Environmental Educators Association. <sighs> Do love, and there's an acronym in there somewhere that I'm missing. Um, they decided to create this sort of workshop, Puppet Sing, to share their love of singing and playful learning in the primary grades uh, with all educators um, who are interested in engaging young people outdoors. And actually, I'm, I'm doing some puppet work with adults tomorrow, right? I think this really goes for any age, but I'm going to shut up. I'm going to pass it over to you. Welcome, Bridget and Charlotte. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. We're just going to share a screen. Uh, and while they get set up, um, don't forget to what, register for the workshops. And hey, look, we've got a little bit of a thing where we're trying to make the videos work the best that they can. Uh, and we might end up with a couple of little gray bars sort of mucking about a little bit, but that is what is necessary in order to get best quality audio video. And you're gonna wanna sing along. So um, yes, bear with us. If you're really stuck, type it in the chat and we'll, we'll do our best to communicate uh, that we need a bit more support we do have a big box on the right hand side that we might ask you to try and remove bridget and charlotte a box on the right hand side yeah not on, on the bottom. right not on the bottom which, which has got box? bigger does it say mute and oh sorry we we can't see the box it might be the chat potentially yeah we... i think it looks like the chat uh Can you stop, hide your chat and reshare? Let me just see. Did that help? Did that help? No, it must be another box. Uh, is it the participants list or? It's covering the whole right hand, bottom right hand rectangle of your screen. Not for mm -hmm. us. Um, open Zoom. Is Zoom showing up? Click on that. I want your bottom thing to come again. Where's your taskbar gone? Mm. I just wanted to go to Zoom and see if something was. Um... Oh, here maybe. Sorry, team. Thanks so much for bearing with us for a minute. Um, We're not sure. We don't have the box. We're sorry. We don't know what it is. We can't see it. Okay, well, let's just keep rolling and we'll see okay. how we go. <laughs> There's been so many curveballs thrown our way here. We've got, a, we're in the middle of a severe thunderstorm watch. So there's thunder and lightning outside and we just hope we don't drop our connection. And um, we're sorry for the gray boxes that we can't see. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna do our, our best to share the videos with you. If they don't show up well, um, then please know that you will get a link to, to revisit this slide uh, later so that if you want to revisit anything, uh, get a reminder or watch the videos, you'll be able to do that. So um, thank you so much for joining us. And we've heard that there's people from all over the world joining us, which is really exciting uh, for us, especially to be sharing this with you today. So thank you for being here. Okay, so uh, we'd like to start with a uh, land acknowledgement and um, just to take you to where we live. This, what you're looking at here is a photo that I took of Old Glory Mountain, which is the high peak in our Roslyn range uh, where we live. And um, I'm sorry, I do not know its traditional name in Sinaix, but um, yeah, we'd like to start by acknowledging that the land is our teacher. And both of us are immensely grateful to live and work and rest and play in this beautiful place that we're sharing with you today with this photo. Um, we'd like to acknowledge that this is the unceded to whom Lao of the Sinaix as well as a place that was home to many other Indigenous groups, including the Tanaha, Silks, and Shwepetmik peoples, who also lived here for thousands of years. Um, this place is also home to Swarkin and Skimhist 
and um, Sinclip and all the other more than human uh, beings who also have lived here for thousands of years. Um, both Charlotte and I acknowledge our responsibility to enter the circle of reconciliation and to find our path as educators along that healing process. And so we are committed to listening to the stories of this place and this land and the histories of the people. And we would like to acknowledge that we accept our responsibility to share our learning with the children that we teach every day. So you already had our little blurb, <laughs> yeah. but here's, here's a photo of Charlotte and I at our very first presentation of Puppet Sing, uh, just in the past fall in Revelstoke at the, um, oh my gosh, was the Environmental Educators Conference there. Classroom Stay to see. Classroom yeah, to yeah, communities. <laughs> communities. I had it, Jane. <laughs> there we are with all our puppets. Um, and I think uh, this is, Robert spoke to this a little bit. Thank you so much, Robert, for being here as well. Um, but these are some of the puppets that we that we have in, uh, in what well, I call them my forest friends. So in our in our classroom, there are forest friends. And these are the beautiful puppets um, from the out, they're available on the Outdoor Learning Store website. They partnered with Strong Nations um, for this set. And they're really lovely. Um, there's also the bundle. If you look on the other side of the screen, you'll see that there's more that you can get. You could, comes with all of the puppets. It comes with the animals care for Mother Earth. Earth. Um, it comes with a little indigenous plant memory uh, game as well as some rubber stick um, stamps. Uh, and so that's a great place to start if you are thinking about how you can build your puppet collection. Um, I would really recommend them. That's a great place to start. Um, but I also wanted to just quick note oh, before we, no, that's fine. We can stay there. Okay. Um, the pup, quick note about the puppets that Bridget and I use. Um, they are local to our area in the Columbia Basin in British Columbia. Um, and we do really encourage you to make or purchase your puppets that are local to your area um, to help foster connections between your students and the local space and animals. Um, in your area as well. So something to keep in mind. Oh, sorry, this is sometimes possessed. It's sometimes possessed. Okay. <laughs> uh, our goal for this workshop is for everyone here to come away with at least one idea that you would feel comfortable trying tomorrow. So let's jump right in. Okay, so um, we'd like to start by, um, presenting the first way that we use our puppets in our outdoor classroom. So for number one, you can use the puppets to tell stories, lead songs, and then with the, the big um, idea to foster connect, help the children foster connections with their local ecosystem. So the photo that you're viewing here is from last fall and um, the puppets are telling a story of fall. Puppets love to tell stories and sing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a chant that I like to do with my students when we're up on our Forest Friday adventures. Um, it's called the Forest Song. It's a call and repeat chant. It's meant to be fun and silly and playful and just to help students connect to their local ecos ecosystems again by getting to know their local animals in their area. Um, so the way that it works is students choose a puppet and um, I always encourage students not to choose and search for the one that they want, but rather reach in and pick one. And the one that they get is the animal they're meant to have. And maybe there's a lesson that they're going to learn from that animal that day or a connection that they can make. Um, and then we go around the circle, we sing the little chant and each child is asked to make the sound of their animal. And it's okay if they don't know the sound, um, that's the playful silly part we can make it up or we can think about the animal's traits. If it's a butterfly, maybe it's a of the wind or if it's a fish, a little blub, blub, blub. Um, and there's a video on the next slide that will show the, the chant in action. So I hope it works for you to see. Yeah, and like we said, if it is not coming through with the best recording, you can go back and listen to these. Yes, I'm oh, sorry.
This is the forest song. This is the forest song. We sing it all night long. We sing it all night long. When the people are gone. When the people are gone. I'm a black bear. Grr, grr. What are you? I'm a coyote. What are you? A wee. A I'm a weasel. What are you? Uh, oh. oh, good one. Oh. What are you? A grizzly bear. Mm, what do they need? <laughs> what are you, Nick? <laughs> Very good. Quick oh. twice. It's always a quick twice. This, this is the forest song. This is the forest song. Quick twice just so you know after a video. Oh. Again, again. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I swear sorry, my so work fun. computer is possessed half the time. Um okay. Zoom so is definitely having a moment today. <laughs> So we're still focusing on the first, um, the first purpose, which is to foster connections. So throughout this um, slideshow, we'll also share just a few of our favorite anchor books. But honestly, there's like an endless amount of books out there that have just wonderful messages and science messages and um, stewardship messages. So just start to play around and tap into all that. But this is a lovely book. It's called That Chickadee Feeling. Um, this book definitely is set in, I would say, um, a, a climate of the nor Northern Hemisphere. Um, so it's very, for us, it's very suitable for where we live in Canada. Um, so this one's a lovely one. I always have the chickadee puppet come and help tell the story. So as I'm reading the story, when the chickadee enters the story, um, the puppet will come and land on the children. But it's just a lovely one for children to start to reflect on the just the special moments in nature they they have already had in their life. And you get to tap into that background knowledge and experience that they already have. And um, it's a really nice one for early in the school year. So the main message being like helping the children tune into being open to um, the land's lessons every day. So I like after that story to also start to introduce something called sit spots with my students and um, with sit spots, the children learn that they go off and they find their own space somewhere in your outdoor setting. And um, we'll do, you can use sit spots all kinds of different ways, but just to tie in the puppet idea, or even just like, you know, the children that just have a hard time being detached from the other kids in the group if they get to go with one of their little stuffies it's like they're bringing a little friend with them and then each student so each student picks a puppet they go and do their sit spot with the puppet where they get to sit in their own quiet space and notice the special nature moments around them and then it's nice to always come back and gather as a group in your gathering place and then um, the students can share in a talking circle or a sharing circle their special nature experiences that they had. So this song, My Roots Go Down, is similar to the forest chant. And it's also uh, just another nice one to um, continue to have the children really express their understanding of their lo local ecosystem. And um, it's just another fun improv song. And uh, the, the, the students, are helping to they every time you sing it would be different they help to create the verses um so here we go it's called my roots go down and just a little just just a little fyi you're going to get a link to um a document that has these songs that are sung by the original um artists that have inspired us so then you can re-listen to the tune and then just adapt it to your work I'm like a bird flapping all around. 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 Oh, what's yours, boy? I'm being Ooh, okay, let's be 
let's be eagles eating salmon. I like an eagle eating salmon. I like an eagle eating salmon. I like an eagle eating salmon. My roots go down. I'm going to see if you want them. Amber, what's yours? I'm going to give you all. Oh, Maya, ready? I'm like a wolf howling at the moon. I'm like a wolf howling at the moon. Oh. Okay. <laughs> this is another song that we like to do with our kids. It's uh, called the water song. Um, and in this one, again, students choose a puppet. Um, and this time they're thinking about the traits of their, of their animal. Um, so it could be, I saw four legs by the water side, or I saw two legs by the water side. I saw scaled ones, I saw flying ones. And so they're thinking about, is my puppet a four-legged creature? Is my pup puppet a flying one? And if it is, then they go into the middle of the circle and they dance. Um, so let's check that one out. Listen to the water rolling down the river. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. Rolling down the river. I saw four legs by the water side. I saw four legs by the water side. I saw four legs by the water side. Oh, by the water side. Oh, by the water side. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. I saw two legs by the water side. I saw two legs by the water side. I saw two legs by the water side. Oh, by the water side. Oh, by the water side. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. I saw that's where that one cuts off. Okay. Listen to the water. Okay, so a few songs and just playful learning to get you going. Um, here's another, just another anchor book that we wanted to share. So remember, again, we're just still in the section where we're fostering connections with our local ecosystem. So this is a really wonderful book, could be used in any, um, any ecosystem. It's called Hey Little Ant, and it's about a little boy who's about to step on this ant, and the ant stops him and has a conversation and just... Um, you know, really speaks up for the value of their life and has the child really consider, um, just consider their decision from their per perspective. So just another one to bring into your practice. Again, if you have an ant puppet, you could act that out with the, with the puppet. Um, so here's an activity that I just did, just wrapped up a few weeks ago, connecting with the plant beings in our outdoor classroom. Um, so this is just a little segue into the puppet act, the puppet activity that I linked to it. But um, just to give you another idea, so over the course of the early spring, spring, the students visited the same plant each week, and then they drew and observed as the bud transformed over the four weeks. So there's an example from Larch Tree. And then at the end of their study, we went around and we sang the song, Love the World with the puppets. And uh, it actually served two purposes. I think we got to spread love to the plants that we got to know over that time, but also um, in a musical and fun way, the students learned the names of the beings that they had spent time with. So this is called Love the World. Two large trees standing calling green. We love you, we love you. Two large trees standing on the green. We love the way you call. 
call our names. You call our names and we call yours. We get along when we're outdoors. You call our names and we call yours. We love the way you call our names. Okay, <laughs> so another fun one. Okay, so we're going to go on to our second um, section of our slideshow. So another way that we use the puppets in our practice is to share Indigenous stories and also ways of knowing um, with the students. So here's a photo of me in the winter, and I was using the puppets to act out um, this story, Chijin and the Long Winter. Um, I actually think this one, this series well I'm not sure the trickster tales I'm not sure if they are if you can buy them through strong nations but if not we should ask them to <laughs> get them um but what's great about this book and I'll show you the next screen all these different series of so we have the strong stories Tulagak and other Inuit tales trickster tales and as well animals care for mother earth all of, well not the animals care for That's mother earth but the three the three of the little books, they all are graphic novels. So they actually are all dialogue driven. So they're really excellent for using the puppets to help tell the stories. And sometimes I'll do that, or if I have another adult with me, or if I have an older student, or sometimes I'll engage the children with them. I'll give, I'll have a few students act it out with me. And then I just prompt them. Like, I'll just say like, when their line comes up and I'll go like, now Chipmunk says, blah, blah, blah. And then they say it and help tell the story. Yes, Animals Care for Mother Earth was the other one there. And this is part of the bundle that, sorry, that comes with, uh, that comes um, on the Outdoor Learning Store with these. And it each kind of section has a little story and it matches the puppets that you get so that those puppets, if you want to share those stories, those puppets can share those lovely stories um, with you. Uh, this was another book that I wanted to just quickly talk about. It's called The Sharing Circle. And it's a lovely story um, written by Teresa Larson jo uh, Jonathan that um, uses lots of animal characters to basically discuss the importance of the sharing circle. And there's some animals in the story that need to navigate some big feelings and some problem solving. They need a, a bit of support. And so they are supported to uh, work through that, that in a sharing circle with each other. Um, and I think it's a really lovely book because it it brings in these Indigenous pedagogies, um, the teachings of the circle. Um, and so when we go up to the forest, we usually meet in a circle. Most of what we do with our puppets, often our singing and playing and sharing happens in a circle as well. Um, and so that's a great one. You can have all of the animal puppets that are in the book. Once the kids get to know the book really well, they can act it out with the puppets, which is really a nice way for them on their own to use the puppets um, by retelling the story. Um, and you can use the puppets as well when you first introduce it and have them tell the story in that sharing circle. And I just to add to that, like just something that is has shifted for me in my practice um is like especially you know as a as a white woman like and and you know bringing indigenous teachings into my practice like and trying to do that in a respectful and meaningful um way I think when I first started I was always it was just always outside myself you know like this is this is a story but not from my culture but we're gonna read it and it was just outside of myself but I think what shifted for me is starting to bring Indigenous pedagogies into my practice mm -hmm. and just having it be part of it and um yeah the circle all the all the circle work and the shared collective like the conversations and the collective learning um this is a big yeah. part of that yeah Okay, um, so next, so number three, the third section that um, is using the puppets to teach uh, your science content. So for me, when I teach in the outdoor classroom with kindergarten and grade one, I have a responsibility to um, be covering the, the BC science curricul curriculum for those students. So um, the outdoor classroom is just a perfect setting for that. And we 
um, do a lot of learning around life cycles and adaptations of our local plants and animals. So here's a picture of me just from a couple of weeks ago. We've been learning about um, the different beans that are returning to our outdoor classroom area and um, learning about the life cycle of ladybug. And ladybug helped tell the story. And uh, yeah, the students were super engaged. So here's one, um, so surviving winter and the different adaptations that students have, or not students, sorry, that animals have to survive the winter. So um, we have animals that migrate, hibernate, or the ones that stay and cope. So essentially what I do is like through the autumn, as winter approaches, we read all kinds of books and I introduce all different, all the different animals that have their different story about how they survive winter. And, um, and then as winter gets really close, so for us, it's usually towards the end of November, um, we have a big going away party for some of our special puppets that spend time with us. So for me, it's Eagleton and Huckleberry, and we have a going away party for a few of the puppets that migrate and hibernate. And then actually they go away for the rest of the winter. So it's, it becomes a special thing. This is one of the all time favorite days of the year for the students. They love it. You make it a party. Um, you and I, that's my, uh, an example of my invitation. And um, they bring their stuffy, they bring a stuffy from home that day and we play party games with them. And then I always bring like party snacks. So I bring the Swedish berries, which are Huckleberry's favorite food. And I bring um, those goldfish crackers, which are Eagle tins. And um, I'll just show you the next slide. So here's a photo of the kids with their their stuffies that came to the party so really fun so whatever is your thing where you live or if you can somehow celebrate um, the animals that come and go or whatever is the seasonal thing um it's fun and, and then they just cannot wait till after spring break when they return and we make a big um you know welcome back for them absolutely um, yes, so another really fun uh, way of teaching about animal adaptations um, is the concept of camouflage. So here there's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, one of the ways is that you can take your lovely puppets and you can place them um, and in places where they're camouflaged, not hidden, uh, but camouflaged around your outside classroom or your forest area, wherever you might be. And then you can go on a walk with students and see how many of the puppets they can find. Um, I like to take that opportunity to talk about how camouflage is different from simply hiding because they're blending in with their environment. And then once we've spoken about that, students can take the puppets and they can try and see if they can find somewhere in the forest that their puppet camouflage as well, um, as opposed to hiding it in a hole, kind of thinking about what it looks like and then finding the same kind of colors in the forest to see where it would blend in. But it's a really fun one and they kids love to search and find and it feels just like we're playing. So here's another science content idea for you. So this is also what I just came through. So with all the um, pollinators are returning to our region. And um, so we've been doing a lot of learning around that. I'd like to credit uh, Megan Zenny for the activity that you'll see shortly. And then uh, the song that, I'll, that I sing with the students is called the Bumblebee Buzz Song, which was shared to me by um, one of my local colleagues that live, that teaches in my district, Janet Boucher. Um, so, you know, first you could start by introducing the different puppets and there's, they can help read all these, um, awesome books about pollinators. I love these two different series. So the ones by Ginny Johnson, what's it like to be, and there's a dragonfly, you know, a grasshopper, a bee, all these different um, beans. And then the backyard books um, are, are you a butterfly? And they're very sweet as well. And they, they ask the students like, are you, are you a butterfly? Well, if you are, you would, and then they go through the life cycle of the animals. So once you sort of introduce the different pollinators and learn the bumblebee buzz song, then the activity is the children take a pollinator puppet and they can run around your outdoor classroom or your outdoor area. So you want to make sure that there's different, some kind of flowers blooming and they actually go and pollinate. So you'll see in the video, it is so adorable and sweet. It was when the dandelions were in full bloom. So here's the song. What did I 
did I see? A little black and yellow striped bumblebee. A little black and yellow striped bumblebee. I said, oh, busy bee. Oh, busy bee. Do you like to stay? <laughs> he said, actually, I like to just sing, sing, sing. Actually, I like to just sing, sing, sing. Buzz, buzz, zing, zing, zing. Buzz, buzz, zing, zing, zing. Actually, I like to just sing, sing, sing. Good job, everyone. Okay. <laughs> took off some of the pollen and put it on a new flower. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so cute and adorable. It's having the hardest time not laughing. Um, okay, so this is another activity I just actually did this week. Um, it's from the Big Book of Nature Activities, which you can get from the Outdoor Learning Store on page 223. Um, essentially, we did some learning around nests. I got a whole bunch of new bird puppets. And then we just got our hands dirty, made nests out of mud and grass, and then let them set for a couple days. And then um, just yesterday, these photos from yesterday, the students went and took their bird nests that they made and uh, went and hid them around our outdoor classroom. And actually, sorry, the one on the far right, that's a snake. So we also talked about other beings that um, also use nests. Such a fun activity. Yeah, the puppets really give them a lot of meaning when they're doing these things. It's like not just building a nest, which is fun, but now we're building a nest for the yeah. forest friends and it just brings them right in, which kind of leads into the next, the next one. Um, just the importance of free play. And certainly if you work with young children, if you are a primary teacher, if you have a background in um, early childhood education, or if you're a parent of young children, you know about the importance of free play. Um, it's so important that we value this time for students to play and explore with the puppets on their own, in their own ways. And just so wonderful as well to provide things like loose parts. If you're up in a forest, you don't have to provide the loose parts the forest will provide. Um, but if you have an outdoor classroom or a certain space that you're in, that way uh, students can um, create homes, they can build nests, they can build little hotels, or they can, they always kind of seem to come back to building homes. That's my, my kids' favorite ones to do. Um, but as they play, just to note, you know, they're engaged in their local environments as they're playing, they're connecting with the land, they're connecting with each other. They're building those important communication skills as they play, and they'll often integrate their nature um, and scientific learning into their play. So if they've just learned some wonderful things about pollinators or about bees, and you give them time to play, if you listen carefully, you'll often overhear them integrating that knowledge that they've learned into their games. Um, and of course, 
we have to mention that this free play is it's also contributing to their well-being and their mental health, which is so important for our little ones. Um, Jade or Stephanie, we have a few more slides with our games. I'm just wondering how our time is. Uh, we've got maybe four minutes left. Okay. That picture isn't showing up. Um, okay. So we do maybe it. We'll Share. People, we, people we don't have loving. to go through it. We don't have to read through each game because it's all here. And just as long as, you know, if everyone gets the link and you will, we have a resource that we are going to share as well. And like Bridget said, it has the link to all of the songs and way more. And you can click on the top and hear the song. The lyrics are there. So the songs are all going to be there. Um, and then in the resource, there's all the ways to use the puppets that we've talked about already. And there's games. So and I don't probably need to read it all because it's, you yeah. know, the end of June. And if you're a teacher, it's yeah. like, it, how much are we going to retain really anyways? But um, these are really fun ones that we like to play. Save the stuffies. Bridget yeah. likes to play with her on her, when everyone Our brings the stuffy day. for the party yeah. day. Um, and Otter Steel Salmon, really fun game. You can see a picture of it here. Uh, there's a little tiny clip of it. Yeah. Um, and essentially, I mean, essentially with our games, you can play any game that you love playing, but yeah. just like, if you have a the person who's tagging, turn them into a predator and have them hold the predator puppets. Yeah. And it just makes it yeah that more exciting. Yeah. Um, here's just a little clip of one of the games, Otter Steel, Steel Salmon. I have no idea. They're trying to steal the pine cone. And Huckleberry is in the middle trying to tag them. And then again, we won't go through yeah. it, it, but they're, they're in there. They're another just different game. game. <laughs> <laughs> another great game. Um, and again, another great game. If you've ever done parachute games, um, Over and Under the Snow is a wonderful anchor book. And then you can play the Subnivian, play the game acting out the Subnivian zone. And just knowing that um, you can get outside with the puppets all year round in any season, in whatever weather, so yeah. it doesn't just have to be on, on your uh, lovely weather days. Um, so thank you for joining us. You'll see here uh, that we have at the top, the Google Doc of songs, uh, songs to connect with the land. And no, that's that. great. And then if you were to click on the title, which is in blue, you'll hear the song um, being sung and all of the lyrics are there as well. And then if, we underneath it says resource for puppet sing that's the one that gives the ideas that gives some of the games and also i want to point out that it has links to where you can find puppets and um so there's lots of different places that we've list, listed at the beginning for where to buy and purchase the puppets that we've used in our practice um but also there's two documents here to make puppets. So if you are just starting out with puppets and you don't have the budget right now for um, a whole bunch of these guys for a class set, you can start by making them. So I do recommend printing them on color, um, in color and laminating them because that's the only way that they're gonna last a little while. Um, so this is kind of where I started. This is a full class set and there's a whole bunch. And again, just noting that um, we encourage you to purchase puppets or make puppets that are local to your uh, area, to your ecosystems. Um, these ones are Columbia Basin inspired puppets um, in our area. And it wasn't too hard to make them, just a Google search of images of animals, insects, all creatures. Um, and you just, I just copied and pasted them into a Word document. That's kind of how that started. And for the pollinator activity that yeah. Bridget was if talking about. If you love about. that pollinator activity, yeah. you could do this Monday morning. Yeah. These are three or a few different pollinators that we have locally. Yeah. And then you just um, cut them, glue them on popsicle sticks, and then off you go. It would be lovely to have a, a whole class set of all of these, but it's not always realistic. So there is something there for you to use right away as soon as you have time to get to a color printer yeah. and a laminator. And both those yeah. documents are living documents. So... Yeah. Things will probably get added over the years if you save mm -hmm. the link. Absolutely, yes. 
So thank you for sharing your time with us. We are very grateful that you yeah. chose to be here to Our listen to us today. So thank you. <laughs> Huzzah, thank you so much. My right. gosh, what fun. Um, really, so much fun. And I can't help but think you're doing it. And I'm just like, I have, you know, I thought I knew some songs, but those, some of those were new and that was fantastic. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, you can see from the reactions, you probably weren't monitoring the chat because you were so busy. Um, but just so many people like, this is great. I could do this. I can convince others educators to do this because it's easy and simple so yay and yes those um puppets the ones that Bridget just showed were um uh um oh yes so easy to make and then we have the the little furry ones there from Shim Sham uh, Indigenous artist Bill Helene and he did that whole Strong Stories uh set as well um sorry animals care for mother earth which have amazing oh, things but anyway let's do some quick questions we've got a couple of minutes for questions yeah you got it that's it um <laughs> we got all the things um all of the things but you can start small like you said and what a lovely way um to connect into that and um yeah a couple of people sharing and this is so key um lovely that people really connected with that you were just saying oh, I don't just talk about indigenous perspectives I embody them because we are all one and we are connected there and and the conversations I'm having with my indigenous mentors are like yes be with us share these perspectives because they are in all of us respect reciprocity relationship it's it's what we should be doing full stop so that's lovely uh, but if you do um don't already reach out to your local first nations um call rather than email call um most um first nations groups have uh, you know an office um that you can call call them say hey you know record your kids speaking words learn the words they're on first voices or other internet resources learn them reach out and expect nothing in return and then if you do get a relationship started then you have some really beautiful things to build off um so anyway i'm going to ask some questions for you um thank you again sorry thank you so lovely um ah oh, this is one of the best workshops ever cool okay um z asked how many times do you review the chant songs until the roof the youth remember to sing them do you ever print words or you just you just say it no paper <laughs> so how many times do we um review it before we do it ourselves or with how many times do i think until they remember or do you just, it's always well, call and response. So they a don't lot of them, it. yeah, a lot of them are call and response. And so those you can just do right away. And kids have this incredible capacity to pick up on songs, uh, songs and music. I, it's why in early childhood so much is done through singing, right? Because they will pick it up quicker than if you showed it to them or read it to them or told them. Um, so I think any time it's call and repeat, they will just pick it up right away um a lot of the songs listen to the water isn't call and repeat but it, it it's repetitive so every time we went through that I would say by the second time no even by the first time I had kids joining in with me by the second time the majority would be joining in certainly by the third time we did the chorus they would all know it and they came home uh, back to school and they were still singing it the first day that I had introduced it but we've sung that together maybe five times up there yeah. and charlotte has also um said like just anytime you add actions to songs mm -hmm. even if you're just making up your own action that 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 body action just helps them to yeah. internalize the lyrics and everything yeah. amazing and if you do have older students there's an environment songs to remy rodin who has amazing is it two hours think about the planet um and if you're francophone he sings in both english and french and animals need food water shelter space and there's lots of actions in there as well so maybe as well like they're available on spotify and stuff and on his website there's all the lyrics um if you if, if you also want to do other songs there's there's heaps out there right yeah he's um, on our he's, song link we have his we have his link on our on our yeah, song he's great and by the way, people were saying thank you so much for sharing real resources. Lots of people don't do that. It's incredibly generous of you. Thank you. Uh, Linda says, what do you, what do I do if I cannot sing to save my life? And I, I, I'd like to say that that's me. Just <laughs> the kids will not judge you. No, 
No, I, I would, I would suggest just jumping in and, and going for it and yeah. they won't, they won't judge you and they'll just be so happy that you're singing with them. I mm -hmm. think that's, what's going to stand yeah. out to them. And then, I mean, then just for your own confidence, I would just keep practice at home. Just mm -hmm. do that intentionally sing in the shower while you're cooking, put on some of the songs and just like get it in again for you, get it in your body yeah. so that it comes out naturally. Or, or you can just be like a closet singer, like only with your kids. Cause there's sometimes like, I don't want to sound like my husband or my, you know, but it's when I'm with kids, it's like a sacred space and all the singing can, can happen. <laughs> no judgment. Yeah. That's so lovely. Um, okay. Sasha asked, does the, like, does your resources, does it have sheet music or notation? Um, because Sasha would love to share it with a music teacher who might actually be able to play a little tune. On our song link, there's only one song that is the sheet music and that's the Bumblebee Buzz because I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't actually know the source that it's from. Um, and it was just shared to me as it, a scanned it, document. It was hard to like um, to credit a lot of those songs They that in our we've come to them by other people singing them by like camp songs. And even when you try to search to find like an original source, like who made this song, it's very kind of a general knowledge thing. Um, but I would imagine if there was a song that really stuck out to you, you might be able to, to Google search it and type in, you know, maybe guitar chords or something mm -hmm. for that song. And maybe someone somewhere on the internet has done it. Mm -hmm. um, possible just have to dive deep into the internet verse and have a yes. look okay we've got um one last person asked do you have the puppets accessible uh to the children at all times is it just like puppet mania and do you have to wash them a lot um i've washed them a few times this year i i come and go with how i covet the puppets because we have lost a few and sometimes like um, one will go missing and then three months later it shows up again like when the grass is cut so um, I definitely have a few like my my teaching puppets like Eagleton and Huckleberry they're not in my big puppet basket and I have a few other ones that are pretty special like for example I recently lost chickadee this winter so we'll probably keep it in a special collection with um, the anchor books that I use all like use every year. Uh, but other than that, I have just a big basket with the puppets in it. So when when we're done our lesson or you know, when it's outdoor centers and they get some free play time, then it's just the ones that want to play with puppets will stay and do their thing with the puppets. And there's kids going off and doing other things that don't want anything to do with puppets during that time. But yeah, the puppets are there. Yeah, I think if you're if you're still building your collection then you might want to be just a little bit more like, okay, we're bringing the puppets out now. We're, you know, and like I have all these and I'm just starting out with mine, which is why they're still all like, they're really new looking and lovely because they haven't had a chance to get too filthy yet, yet. But, um, but no, it, when it's free play, this is what my kids ask for more than anything. Even when we're in the classroom, if we have play centers, they know where the forest friends are. And most of them will say, Miss Souls, can we play with the forest friends outside? They don't really want to do the kitchen or the train tracks. They're like, can we just take the forest friends out? And yes, I do let them. So. How beautiful. Um, forest friends for everyone and beautiful relationships with nature. Thank you so much for all the work you do. And the reason I shouted C to C conference is because <laughs> I was very lucky to be a part of organizing that. And despite that being your first deliverance of that workshop it was the one that we got the most out of 60 by the way the most positive feedback about um not just saying it's to toot your horns but just that this work resonates with all ages of all people and it's accessible and joyful and I just I'm so grateful that you shared with us hopefully we'll have you back for something else in the future um thank you for the work you do and for your amazing workshop thank you thank you thank, thank you, you everybody <laughs> it would be rapturous applause if people could do it and in the <laughs> workshops we will allow people to unmute and applaud um okay everyone we're late you think you'd be used to it by sorry, now sorry. because we no, it wasn't you it was me rambling <laughs> at the beginning doing all the things i can't believe this is the final of the spring series you get a little gap i hope you all have a fantastic summer and then it rains 
where you need rain uh, and that you get some sunshine if um, you've had lots of rain and want something on the other side. Got a couple of quick prizes for you. Remember, a really good idea to open the outdoorlearningstore.com website and take the outside.ca website so that uh, you are ready because it is a sort of scavenger hunt website vibe. Okay, people, oh, we've got I, two I, cards. Oh. Can I interrupt just yeah. because I've seen it in, in the chat twice? Um, people are wondering okay. if they can stay in touch with Bridget and Charlotte somehow. Yes, we have our, yeah, our work emails. So I'm not sure, will Duncan send out the- Yes, the, the follow-up. Follow if you can send me the link to that, those two links in via email to me, uh, and then I'll put your emails and that into the follow-up email, which will okay. be with you by lunchtime tomorrow. Yeah, I have a little, I have an Instagram, a public Instagram, and it's um, raising Kootenai wildlings. So at, and then raising Kootenai wildlings, it's all one thing. And I share a lot of my ideas and stuff that I'm doing with my kids on Forest Friday on that as well. So that's another. So we can add that link. So we'll, we'll send all that to Duncan. We'll send our contact to Duncan. Okay. Or Jade. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. We just he just sits in the back. He does all the typing these days. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Oh, we're excited for the full webinars too, Brooke. So excited that you'll join us. Okay. Prizes: two gift cards, twenty-five dollar gift cards to the outdoor learning store coming your way. Question one, everyone. Fingers at ready. Uh, Steph is ready in the chat to receive. Um, what percentage of proceeds go back into outdoor learning nonprofit initiatives at the outdoor learning store? All right, and I'm looking that for the first <laughs> first right answer, which <laughs> Lisa Marie Labossier Taylor, 100%. Amazing. You got it. There it is. Okay, so send Stephanie an email, please. Uh, sorry, a private message with your email and whether you're in Canadian or US dollars. Fantastic. Second outdoor learning store gift card up for grabs on the outdoor learning store website how many different regions do we sort our resources into you don't have to name them all but how many of them are there to ensure that uh, we are connecting to people from all different places for the first right answer but i haven't seen it yet are people no, counting we'll or are they website. just are they just smashing the I think, keyboard I think everybody they're just button smashing it's like <laughs> super mario brothers just any number <laughs> Um, I do I see that. Yeah, Linda Asma. Congrats. It's nine, nine different regions. Yeah. Northern Canada and Alaska, Western Canada, Eastern Canada, Atlantic Canada, Western USA, Midwest USA, Northeast USA, Southern USA, Mexico. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of the books are um, sort of international. But as Bridget and Charlotte said, um, if you're doing puppet shows or anything learning about place based, place based learn, um, we've got resources that connect to your place specifically. Okay, people, thank you so much. Uh, two more gifts, take me outside gift cards. These come only in Canadian dollars, but there are some fantastic things like the t-shirts, uh, caps and tubes. So talking of that, question three, how many different designs of adult hats are there on the take me outside shop? Excluding tubes in hats, adults, how many different designs do they have created by Amblo, which is a Canadian owned and operated small family business, ethical policies and practices? How many different designs do they have? And Jade, you're counting like specific different. Exactly. Like to, How many yeah. different options are there? <laughs> you could have I, one. It looks like it looks like, Lin, it looks like Linda got it again. Oh, we're gonna have to pick someone else. <laughs> I'm gonna keep scrolling, but congrats, Linda. You're so fast and sharp. Noreen uh, Sajad, congrats, it's eight. Lovely, good job. Uh, there are eight different options. Okay, last question for you. How many different colors of the Take Me Outside weatherproof journals can you get? They come in a certain number of different colors. How many different colored journals? Collect them all. Collect all four, as <laughs> Teresa Sotal just said. Yeah, four different colors. You got it. Um, is that who won? Yes. Yes. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> I'm really sorry. That's it. That's all. Um, thank you, everyone, for all the 
energy and time and effort you put into coming to these after your busy work day or whatever kind of day you've had. Uh, we love and honour all of you for the work that you're doing. Um, this community means the world to all of the people connected into it. And we want to see you back, come back in full, and then I'll be able to see your faces and your hiking and your chatting and your clapping. Um, so, yes, join us uh, starting September 26th for the full series but we've got some other bits and pieces coming online um so we'll be sharing them out as and when they arrive um thank you so much for everything uh bridget charlotte amazing well bridget it's nowhere to be seen she's off, she's off hiding the puppets in the forest um big hearts and hugs for everyone take care good night good night everybody